Thank you for joining us here at Ask a Historian. I'm Matthew Wilkinson, historian with Heritage Mississauga. Join us each week here as we explore fascinating stories that connect to the city of Mississauga. Like, subscribe, and follow us and stay up to date on all the heritage happenings with Heritage Mississauga. Joining us this week, is our special guest Rob Stanchik from the Museum and Archives of the Polish Armed Forces, also known locally as the Orlinski Museum. Um, we, we've had uh, discussions before on the Orlinski Museum, but uh, I know it has been some time. And so, uh, but first off, Rob, thank you for for joining us. And uh, no uh, can you give us just uh, tell us about the museum itself? Uh, uh, I I know. In these days of COVID, we haven't been open. Um, but uh, you know, if if we have people that haven't heard of it before, or just curious for a refresher, can you give us just a, a background on what the museum is, and where it is? Yeah, for sure. So the Orlinski Museum is located in a retirement called Bao Vila. It's uh, located in Mississauga or in the Clarkson area. So uh, Bao Vila itself was a retirement home that was founded on uh, Polish uh, veterans. So. One of the first person to found was part of the first uh, armored division. His name was Mieczysław uh, Kominek. And, you know, there was this uh, idea because um, a lot of um, veterans after World War II were coming to uh, Canada because, you know, they didn't want to return to Poland at the time because it was under uh, communist rule. So they founded this uh, retirement home and then that's uh, where a lot of them went. And then um, after a while, since there were so many veterans, uh, they wanted a place to um, preserve their stories, you know, preserve their love, their memorabilia, and all kinds of uh, artifacts, things like that. Uh, so um, it really came from uh, two prominent people. His name, they were uh, George Kowalczyk and Krzysztof Szydłowski. Krzysztof Szydłowski was also another uh, veteran. Uh, so they had uh, this idea because, you know, veterans want to preserve their stories. So the museum was founded in uh, 2002 and it was, um, so the reason why it's called the Orlinski Museum because the patron is a, a pilot called Bolesław Orlinski. And he also had the dream uh, to also kind of um, make this museum uh, just, you know, same thing, kind of like preserve the stories. So, um, Yes, yeah, so after he passed away, he left uh, some uh, money. And then, so he died in 1992. So about 10 years later or so, he, um, there was this um, idea to create the museum. So it was founded in uh, 2002. And then uh, right now we're just doing a lot of um, content um, online. So we do have a website. We're actively scanning archival material, taking photographs. Um, and yes, it was, uh, so yeah, during a COVID, it was a bit um, challenging because it is a retirement home and of course, um, taking care of their seniors is number one priority as we agree with, especially uh, a lot of them are actually uh, veterans. So it was uh, closed down for a bit, but that didn't really stop us from engaging an audience. So we uh, continued to work on our passport database. Uh, we uploaded to um, our online uh, collections website. We um, made um, content on Instagram and Facebook. So we really uh, always uh, tried our best and we always uh, increased our following and then we did get a lot of engagement from that. Right. Mm. And, and looking forward, I mean, uh, I, 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 I'm cautious to say looking forward, uh, but, uh, you know, in these, in these days of COVID, again, you've been closed for some time, but primarily I know in the last two years, it's been online engagement, but, but how yeah. can people connect with you and, and kind of explore um, uh, exhibits? Do you, do you have plans for kind of future reopenings? I, I, I imagine you're a little bit different than some museums in that you are within a long-term care facility, but. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, recently, um, so the retirement home started to open up now. So we were able to uh, go in and start to do a lot of uh, work. So one of our priorities right now is we're organizing our uh, library. Uh, there were a lot of uh, um, donation of books uh, to go through and a lot of great uh, reference material. So that's one of the main things uh, we've been uh, working on. And then, um, yeah, and then other ways people can always uh, engage 
uh, with us is they always can message us on Facebook and Instagram. And we all, all, we occasionally get inquiries because a lot of people always ask, you know, my father so-and-so served in this division. Do you have any um, information on that? So we always uh, right. try our best to respond to those um, requests. But uh, yeah, we've been, um, one thing I've been always trying to do is uh, every time we go in, I always grab a binder um, from the museum and then I try to scan it at home because there's so much archival material, so many stories yet to explore. Right. So that's um, a lot of things that we're working on because we want to, because we have so much good content that we really want to bring it um, online. And it's pretty interesting because whenever we do a post, because we do the series called Veteran Wednesday, on Instagram, and then we always get a lot of people be like, "Oh yeah, my father served with uh, so and so," and then or in this unit. So it just makes a nice like discussion on Facebook, and then in the comments section. So it's really nice. I, I I've seen a number of your posts over 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 the months, and um, the what always amazes me is 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 your reach is truly international. Like like yeah. it, it, that, 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 that that's that's an, an amazing you know your small museum here in Mississauga, but yeah. your content is far beyond our borders. It's 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 quite amazing. Yeah, for sure. And then uh, one of the projects we're currently actually working on. Speaking of just international, there's this. Um, project that's run by, they're called Polska 360. And they had this idea to make like a virtual museum about uh, the second Polish core. Mm -hmm. um, so um, we've been reached out uh, by this organization along with other museums. So we had so many meetings about, you know, people from Italy and then from England, uh, from the Netherlands and just all these uh, Polish museums because there's, um, because after the war, you know, Polish immigrants and veterans just have immigrated uh, everywhere around the world and also in Latin America as well. So we've been uh, contacted uh, by them and then we've been kind of uh, uploading a lot of our content to this uh, website. So it's been really, really great. And so this is a, this is a coming virtual exhibit on the Polish Second Corps? Is that the... the... Yes. Yeah, so um, kind of primary focus is more or less um, try to get, uh, you know, as much as veteran stories from the Second Polish Corps and put it into uh, this um, website. So then people can use it for research purposes to uh, learn more about the Second Polish Corps. Um, just uh, all kinds of things related to them. See a lot of the memorabilia, a lot of the divisions that uh, were part of it. So it's uh, it's been going out uh, really great. Um, I believe uh, it's going live soon, uh, but we're still uh, uh, working up and trying to finish it up. So it's it's a really great initiative. It's nice um, to be part of this project. So that's been actually keeping us quite busy during the pandemic. Good. Yeah. It's, can you tell for someone like like me who who knows it only in name? Can you tell us about what is what what is this Polish Second Corps? Yeah, so the past Polish Second Corps was a uh, like a tactical uh, division that was very active in the Second World War between, I think it was 1943 to 1947. So lots of politics behind how this division um, was created. But uh, so there was a lot of um, uh, prisoners in the Soviet Union. And then after there was an amnesty, uh, sign. A lot of them were uh, set free, a lot of those uh, prisoners of war, because um, in 1939, Poland was invaded by, you know, Germans and the, the Soviet Union at that time. So any prisoner of war from the Soviet Union, after there was uh, a pact signed between Poland and Soviet Union after, you know, German invaded Soviet Union, yeah. um, they, um, they were set free. So a lot of those units, they went to the Middle East and they were um, led by this gentleman called uh, Władysław Anders, who was the main general of the Second Polish Corps. And yeah, the Second Polish Corps was very active in the Middle Eastern campaign and the Italian campaign. Okay. So they, we have a lot of pictures of veterans that went to like Iraq and uh, Palestine. Uh, I believe it was also Uzbekistan and all those. Well, I guess it's more Central Asia, but um, they were all in that kind of region there. But they're mostly known for serving in the Italian campaign, um, where they were one of the first to 
conquer in the, um, or win the battle of Monte Cassino. So Monte Cassino was an abbey and they were going yeah. up uh, the hill there. And then, and I do actually have a photograph of that, but they went all the way up to the abbey and it was a very hard battle, very, very casualties because, you know, the Germans had, uh, you know, a lot of um, elevation. You know, the they were trying ground. to climb and then they were, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, that's what they were mostly known for. And they did fight with, um, a lot of Canadians as well. Because there there were Canadians at Monte Cassino in the, in the Italian campaign. Yeah, for sure. Uh, because um, a lot of the divisions, so there was like the 3rd Carpathian Division, 5th uh, Crisola Division, which were part of the 4-2nd Corps. Okay. But they were part of also this uh, greater big arm called the British 8th Army as well. And a lot of Canadians were under that. And I believe it was... But it was the armored first armored brigade that really helped out in that battle. They were um, over at the, I think it was the Leary Valley River right. uh, that they were uh, fighting with. So yeah, I know there was a lot of um, you know um, cooperation between the Poles and the Canadians um, during the Italian campaign. So yeah, what well, wonder if that uh, that interaction inspired. Uh, Polish soldiers who eventually come to Canada as well. You, you'd be curious. Yeah, I, I think so. Mo most likely. Um, over at um, Valvila, there was actually quite a, a veterans that actually served at Monte Casino. So one of their name was uh, Jan Grigalis. So Jan Grigalis was a huge supporter of, you know, the retirement home and just um, also contributing money to uh, Polish language schools. Wow. And so he, yeah, he was served at Monte Cassino. Then he was part of the Third Carpathian Rifles, and then he eventually settled in uh, Canada. And then he lived the rest of his days in Bavila here in Mississauga, as well. Now, and then, yeah, uh, no, I was, I was just um, so I, I'm fascinated with the connections of the Italian campaign, but the. Yeah. I mean, you're 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 located here in Mississauga, yeah, and from the museum yeah. perspective, and you're contributing to this this larger project, uh, mm -hmm. international project on the Second Polish Corps or the Polish yeah. Second Corps. Um, that is, I'm assuming that means that we have some connections between the Polish Second Corps and Mississauga. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. And uh, so, the Mississauga connection would be a lot of the uh, veterans that would just eventually settle in Mississauga in their retirement home. And there was quite a bit, like even our patron, uh, Blas Orlinski, uh, he also lived at Val Vila. And it's just nice to have such a known pilot actually in the saga. But yeah, there's second Polish course, so yeah, Jagger and Galleys. And then there was another uh, woman that was part of the Women's Auxiliary. And she was part of the um, 317 Transport Auxiliary. Her name was Helena Horoshe. So there's actually interesting stories of her, like um, from what I heard is that she has vivid memories of like driving Jeeps in Monte Cassino and really helping out, um, you know, transporting troops and so on. So, yeah, and then there was just a lot of uh, other like veterans, like they came to different parts of Canada, like St. Catharines, but they all kind of just um, met their way to Vavila, set on Mississauga, you know, and now we have this museum in Mississauga and then we really just uh, continue to tell their stories here. Right. That would be like a good Mississauga connection. Can you highlight a couple of the veterans that you are sharing stories of for this project uh, that connect uh, not only to the Orlinsky Museum, obviously, but uh, but as, as part of this international project that you're working on? Yeah, so there's uh, quite a bit. So um, one that we are going to be talking about is this gentleman, Wojciech Jarusz. Uh, so we have a lot of his uh, photographs, and there's actually one really nice photograph that after World War II, he labels this one picture of wearing like, like first civilian outfit after the war, which I thought was like pretty interesting. But yeah, we're going to highlight his stories, his uh, journeys through, um, you know, the Middle East and going to Italy as well and finding out the various battles. Um, the other ones, uh, the other ones, I uh, can't remember his name, but there's one kind of interesting story that I just learned from this project was this um, one veteran that was actually, he, he was actually German, but I believe he was uh, a prisoner of war, 
But then he actually ended up joining the second Polish Corps. And that was very interesting because I didn't know that actually happened okay. a lot uh, during um, the Second World War. Um, so because uh, a lot of the things that we did is uh, we actually reached out like Facebook and we gathered a lot of people's, you know, uh, stories. And then this one person that was the son of this veteran, uh, like told me that story. And I thought that was very interesting. That, that, that doesn't seem like the common route you would take. Yeah, exactly. So I was like, oh, that's uh, uh, very interesting. Um, yeah, what else? Yeah, I already talked about Helena. Of course, that's one that lived at Valvila. Um, yeah, another one that we're going to be talking about is Stefan Robotiski. So he was part of uh, one of the um, like military police, but he was also part of one of the motorcycle divisions as well. So yeah, there's we have quite a bit. Uh, I know in total we're going to be submitting about like 30 profiles to this okay. project. Yep. So, um, yeah, I thought there's uh, quite a bit. So, so, so speaking of the, the project itself, uh, the, the, uh, this virtual exhibit for the Polish Second Corps, uh, how can people touch base with it uh, in terms of uh, when it opens and uh, do, they, will there, do they just go to your website and then you'll link to it or is there... Yeah. A, yeah, so how, once, uh, how can we direct yeah. people? Yeah, so once the project is uh, completed, or actually even right now, they can go to this one page called polska360.org, Polska okay. or they can also contact us on our um, website, which is museum, sorry, orlinskymuseum.org. And then they can also follow us on Facebook as well, uh, okay. under Museum and Archives, it's Polish Armed Forces. Um, that's the easiest way to reach us because we're pretty active on there, and then we respond. And and you'll you'll have all the information about the opening for this one once it's once it's uh, up and going. Yes, for yeah. sure. Yes. Well, I, I I look forward to you know seeing and exploring these stories of uh, of, of of veterans of the of the Polish Second Corps and you know a hat tip everywhere to veterans around the world. Um, I mean that they're. they're uh, uh, just the sacrifices that they've given, whether you fell or whether you mm -hmm. came home or set new roots for yourself in different different countries and whatnot. But uh, yeah. veterans deserve to be remembered and, and thanked for for the the roles that they did. Um, and so yeah. we, um, you know, I, I think this there, there's a, a poignancy to this given you know what's happening in you know that rough area of the world today um, yeah. that reflect on these moments when you know in the past when people sure. We're called to arms as well. Um, so I th I thank you for this. Um, no there, uh, I was going to say, <laughs> this sounds really bad to say. Are there any last words? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. thank you. Thank you for sharing the stories with us and for yeah. sharing this this project. No it sounds exciting. Um, yeah. And I really look forward to a day when not only can, uh, you know, we, we all reopen and, and, and connect again in person, but also people can visit Orlinsky, the Orlinsky Museum in time. Um, and, uh, you know, hopefully those days are not that far ahead. And uh, I, you, I've been there thanks yeah. to you and you truly are a gem. I, I, I was blown <laughs> away by the sheer scope of the, of the material that you have, uh, not to mention the library that you have. Um, and uh, I, I think you can probably feel that you'll have a, uh, a, a great deal of interest, uh, especially as these projects evolve and people become more aware of of, of what the collections are. Um, we'll have to we'll have to uh, have you back on and explore more of the uh, Orlinsky Museum collections. Yeah, for sure. And it's just uh, really nice that we can uh, reach out to various um, like community centers and uh, museums in Mississauga, and then they house a lot of our stuff. So we hope to do that in the future yeah. as well. So just uh, bringing a lot of their stories and our you know, beautiful artifacts or to um, all the display cases around this saga. So we're really excited to kind of get more hands on. So, yeah. yeah. I look forward to I, whatever I can do. I, I look forward to it as well. So yeah. uh, great job. Keep it up and uh, yeah. look forward to the to, to uh, the the virtual exhibit opening. Um, so with that, uh, thank you. Thank you, Rob. And uh, we will have the links below for visiting the Orlinsky Museum and, and uh, connecting with the, the upcoming virtual exhibit. Um, and thank you for joining us here on Ask a Historian each and every week uh, and uh, sending your questions and we will explore the fascinating stories of the city of Mississauga and those stories that connect to the city yeah. of Mississauga. Like, subscribe and follow us to stay up to date on all the heritage happenings with Heritage Mississauga and we will see you next week here on Ask a Historian.
right, thank you.